Pastor Daryl Sutton proclaims the good news of Jesus Christ to all people, but he's got a tremendous heart for the peoples of the Middle East. And his biggest desire is to introduce one and all to prophetic biblical teachings that are related to the time of the end. It's good to have you with us again, glad sir. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. So much, so much, not just <laughs> knowledge and, and wisdom, but but revelatory knowledge. Uh, and so important for our times today, Pastor, just while we were talking off set before coming out to our friends watching, uh, things that are going on in the Middle East right yes. now. When we think about the end times, and we're going to mm -hmm. talk about Book of Revelation, uh, Ezekiel, uh, Hosea, scriptural end times. But you mentioned something that I want to bring up now live while, while we're here, and that is Islamic eschatology, mm -hmm. and that how that gives us insight into what's happening in, in the Levant, in Syria, mm -hmm. Iraq, and the rise of ISIS. That drives the, uh, the people of the Middle East. Islamic eschatology is, is as big a uh, factor in what they believe and do over there as, as what we believe about the end times for Christians. Mm -hmm. Just to give some some idea of the different beliefs and the similarities, Muslims believe that there's going to be a great war. Now, when I say Muslims, I'm just speaking broadly in general because Shiites, Sufi, Sunni, all of them have different variations within their groups and other groups. But in the main, there is an idea that there's going to be a, a great war in Jerusalem. Mm. There will be 70,000 Jews that are going to gather in Isfahan mm. and somehow the Arabic version of the Antichrist, the word being Dajjal. The Dajjal is going to lead them to Jerusalem where he'll be defeated by Jesus, giving you the Islamic view. Mm -hmm. And at that point, once he's defeated, then Jesus will announce to the world that he's a Muslim. And then most of the people will follow him and everybody who does not follow him into Islam will then be cast into to hell fire. Now you would wonder mm -hmm. where you would get 70,000 Jewish mm -hmm. people in Iran in the first place. But the belief is that just like when Afghanistan was at war with the Russian people came from around the world to gather for that fight, they think the same thing will happen in those uh, final days. There will be a lot of people that will come and gather for that war. Mm -hmm. Now I know you're, you're an expert and I'll say it, a scholar in, with respect speak seven languages that are in that mm. Semitic, Semitic veins. Mm. Uh, uh, is the, the, the timeline, the prophetic timeline of Islamic eschatology kind of mirror what the, the, the timeline is of biblical eschatology? So for the, uh, the 1.3 whatever maybe b billion Muslims around mm -hmm. the world of different sects and, 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 and um, beliefs, uh, are they kind of sensing a same thing that Christians are sensing with respect to these are the last of days? They are because so many of the beliefs of the Muslims, of course, come from the scriptures. They've just been kind of taken over mm -hmm. into in uh, Islam and adopted. So you take a verse like Deuteronomy 18, 18, I believe it is, where it says, another prophet I'll raise up to you of your own brethren. Well, they take that not to mean, as we Christians would believe it to be Jesus, they consider that to be Muhammad. Muhammad. Uh, another verse that we could pull right in there would be Genesis 15, verses 18 through 21, which is then cited mm. in Matthew 12, verses 18 through 21, and it gives the land uh, boundaries for what will be controlled in the covenant that God gave with Abraham. So we understand that belongs to Israel, but Muslims believe that has come under the power of Islam and has been fulfilled because they themselves as Muslims, being the new covenant people, have occupied those lands. So any lands that come under Islamic power are not supposed to be given up to any other group of people. So as far as the last days and the signs that Muslims have, they see things speeding up the same way we as Christians see things speeding up. Hmm. Well, Pastor Darrell, where are we, in your opinion, on the pro prophetic time clock? I mean, are we right at the door of the, re of the, of the church being raptured? Where are we? Because I know that when we look at what's happening in our world today, we see the escalation of so mm -hmm. much wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, mm -hmm. all of that. So are these the birth pains that we that the Bible talks about? They are. I usually tell people when I'm ministering, I say, I believe the angel is standing there next to the throne with the trumpet pressed to his lips. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm just waiting on a sign from the Father. That's, that's how close I believe that we are. I honestly believe it could take place at, at any time. Now, as far as where we are presently in, in terms of prophecy, I, I think of a scripture like Amos chapter 9, I'll say the final six verses or so. And the scripture says that 
in the latter days that the tabernacle of David will be raised up again. Well, James quotes this in Acts chapter 15, verse 16. He's talking about the people who have been preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. Peter has already spoken. Paul and Barnabas have spoken about the miracle signs and wonders. James says up and says, this is nothing more than what Amos said. Mm -hmm. And the point being that as Jesus takes the name up for himself around the nations of the world, that is the establishing and the partial fulfillment of the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David. What is the tabernacle of David? The tent of David, the house of of David, the kingdom of David, the mm. kin and the brethren of the son of David, the Christians. So the more and more people that come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, the more and more people there will be to populate that kingdom of David during the millennium. Because according to Ezekiel 37, 24, and then also Ezekiel 34, verse 24, David will reign during the millennium with Christ. Mm. We shouldn't assume that everyone knows about Bible prophecy or Absolutely that every not. Christian reads the book of Revelation. No. With that said, who is the Antichrist and what does the <laughs> Bible tell us about him in a nutshell? I know that's a whole teaching series. Well, I'll give you a negative and a positive view. Uh, once On one occasion, I had to review a book for a prophecy teacher because someone had... I'm not sure how it happened, but someone came to the conclusion that King Hussein's brother was the Antichrist. And so I was getting these, these uh, people writing me and people asking questions. I said, well, Daryl, what do you think about this? And I said, well, oh, this is incorrect. I said, Prince Hassan is not the Antichrist because the scripture is very plain. He cannot be revealed until the church is raptured. Mm -hmm. And I said, once the church is raptured, that's when the Lord is then going to remove the book from his father's hand. So when we talk about who the Antichrist is, or we speculate about who he is, there is no answer that we can give because he cannot be manifested as long as the church is here restraining that from happening mm -hmm. or preventing it from happening. Hmm. That's, that's good to know. I know. Well, <laughs> that kind of refutes what uh, some Christians believe yeah. um, about, you know, the Christians or the church at large going through the, the tribulation. What do you say to that? Well, we, we, we certainly will have saints that will be born again, but Christians... I should say the church. Yes, the church will mm -hmm. not go through the tribulation, and this is because Romans 5 and 9 says we'll be delivered from the wrath to come. First Thessalonians 5 and 9 says we're delivered and safe from the wrath to come. Revelation 6 verse 16 says that the tribulation period is called the day of the wrath of the Lamb. So we're spared. That's why we're caught up, and that's why John sees that great company of people around the throne that are worshiping and praising God. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus goes and gets the book. However, once the tribulation period begins and Daniel's 70th week is in the process of being fulfilled, there'll be a boatload of Christians that will come to know the yeah, Lord. New, new believers. New believers, yeah. Yeah. So uh, for today, in the day and age in mm -hmm. which we live, how should we interpret uh, uh, the, the, the church's activities uh, in God's work around the world, and especially with regards to the people of the nation of Israel? Well, the, the, the church in prophecy, just like I was mentioning with uh, Acts chapter 15, we are right now in a position where we need to do everything we can to preach the gospel around the world because we're, ha we're helping reestablish the tabernacle of David. Remember, the whole point of all of that is so that there'll be a, a large group of people to populate this earth during the millennium. We want more people in heaven than we want in hell. So the church should be going out of its way to preach the gospel, miracles, signs, and wonders. There'll be great things that'll, that'll take place. With Israel, though, what we need to consider is there's a verse of Scripture in Hosea chapter 3. It's a very short chapter, but the final two verses are what's important. But to, to give a quick synopsis, Hosea is told by God, marry a lady who's been with a lot of people. He does. God says this is to illustrate the relationship that I have with Israel. They've been unfaithful. They've been with too many lovers. And so this lady has known leadership from all over the place. She's been involved with all kinds of things. But the scripture says of Israel, this will be a nation that abides without a king for many days, without a prince, without leadership, without sacrifices, without anything. And then the scripture then tells us that afterwards they shall return unto the Lord and seek David. Now what we know is that the nation of Israel has been reestablished, so they've returned to the land. So now they have, now they have the, the land, now they have the leadership, but what they lack though is the actual uh, temple and the sacrifices and everything like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you see that, that uh, 
that taking place or that happening in the the, the years to come here? I, I, I the I restoration do. of the temple? I do. I do. I, I, I see that taking place. I see it all coming together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pastor, before we let you go quickly, mm -hmm. I mean, just kind of sum this up in practical terms. Why does this matter mm -hmm. and how should this be applied to our lives today? Well, today when we think of where we are as Christians, the, the way that we live is going to be determined mm -hmm. by our outlook on the end times. You know, most people, whether they believe it or not, everybody has some kind of perspective about the end of all things. Mm -hmm. Now, it can be a perspective that leads us to follow God and walk with Him closely and it inspires us to do greater things for Him, or it can be the kind of perspective on life that leads us to lethargy and some kind of apathy and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think every believer should become a student of Bible prophecy, if for no other reason, just to know where we are and to know where we're going. Mm -hmm. And if we know where we're going, we'll know how to conduct ourselves as we're on our way there. How then we should live. Absolutely. Very good. So good to have you, good to have you Pastor. Yes, Pastor Daryl Sutton, our guest today here on Harvest. And to connect with Pastor Daryl, you can go to revivaltabernacle.org or go to our website, harvest-tv.com. You'll find an easy way to link back to his site in the menu bar.